the popular music festival known as Tommy's Talk drew music lovers to Camp Agawam and helped raise money for a great cause. Dozens of jet skiers from across the country competed for cash prizes and churned up the waters of Lake Orion during Brave the Wave. The streets of downtown Lake Orion were lined with classic cars and hot rods during Galling View of GMC's Kids and Cops Cherry Car Cruise. I'm Sammy Timmy here from Rochester High School. We're going to talk um, to some coaches to talk about the upcoming 2021 football season coming up on ON TV News. Hello everyone, I'm Stacy Calloway. And I'm Lauren Creighton. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. In March of 2021, Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett traveled to Peru with a group of people and offered an invitation to those he met to visit Lake Orion. One group took him up on his invitation and recently paid a visit. We had about um, a dozen like official diplomatic meetings. Um, so we met with the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, the Vice President of the Peruvian Congress, the mayors of Lima, Cusco, Machu Picchu, the director of the FBI, uh, one of the Army generals, uh, and they're really interested in hearing the American response to COVID. Uh, so we were able to, my brother and I, along with a few other people on our, on our, uh, in our group, um, had all these very interesting meetings, met a lot of really uh, dynamic leaders in Peru. We were there and we met one of the vice presidential candidates, actually the, the runner-up in the presidential race. We met with the, the vice presidential candidates. So they love America. They love Americans. They love to see our ingenuity, how we get things done, and especially as it relates to COVID, um, their country's still really struggling and uh, more so than most, most countries. So they're interested in hearing you know, how local leaders in America were responding and serving our residents during the pandemic. On Thursday, August 5th, the mayor of San Borja, Peru, Dr. Alberto Tejeda Noriega arrived at the Orient Center to meet with the township supervisor, board members, and staff. Yeah, we just have a brief presentation, um, just kind of showing them who we are, what our community is, and then um, kind of walking through some of the things we did to support our residents during the pandemic. At the end of the visit, the groups posed for photos and exchanged gifts. The entourage from Peru then headed to Rochester Hills, where Chris Barnett's brother, Brian, serves as mayor. There has been no shortage of live music in Lake Orion this summer. If you combine Marion Township's Wildwood Amphitheater, Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion, and performances at 20 Front Street, music lovers had approximately 50 different concerts to choose from. Recently, Lake Orion residents were invited to enjoy a popular music festival that also acted as a fundraiser. On Friday, July 30th, Tommy Stock kicked off at the Fire Bowl at Camp Agawam and continued throughout the weekend. The music festival began in 2015 as a fundraiser to allow the friends of Camp Agawam to make improvements to the amphitheater. A lot of the people who grew up here on Tommy's Lake, uh, we'd get together and, and play music and buy a campfire. And in 2015, when the, uh, when the township bought this beautiful piece of property and we found out that it was available to be rented, uh, we said, hey, why not try to have Tommy stock over, over there instead of over in, in our friend's yard? And, and it, was, it was honestly born from that and, and has grown into the, the nonprofit that uh, raises money to give back to this, to this beautiful camp to do restorations like this uh, beautiful uh, new, new stone steps and the, the mezzanine that, that we built. So we've come a long way since our first one in 2015 for sure. Things kicked off on Friday night with the band No Money Down. They were the first of approximately 20 bands that performed throughout the weekend in the intimate setting. Musicians also performed at the Tiki Bar located near the shore of Tommy Lake. So all the proceeds from, from this event, all, our, all the uh, money we raise at the beer tent, the tiki bar, um, for ticket sales, all, all is going to come back to improvements down here. We want to, uh, we want to make a more permanent stage, get a, a permanent covering for the stage so we're not putting a tent over it. Uh, we, want, we need to upgrade the power, permanent lighting, concession stands. So we've got a lot, of, a lot of projects to do out here. So we're just going to continue to raise money, have fun in the process, and, and continue to build this place up. The weekend wrapped up on Sunday, August 1st when Camp Agawam turned into a sea of pink for the afternoon. 
The Real Men of Orion hosted their second annual Boobs, Tubes, and Dudes fundraiser supporting breast cancer awareness. Lake Orion residents were invited out to Camp Agawam for food, drinks, and live music. So the Real Men of Orion is a, um, it became or grew out of Real Men Wear Pink of Oakland County, which is five years running in Oakland County. And um, so all the money that we raise through the Real Men of Orion for this event and for all of our events goes to the American Cancer Society uh, and it goes to the Making Strides Division. So basically their mission is to help people who are fighting breast cancer with um, lodging, food, therapy, um, counseling, whatever they need to help make the burden a little less as they're going through this traumatic uh, traumatic experience. Um, and then they also, some of the money does go to research through them as well. So the American Cancer Society is our partner in everything we do for uh, Real Men Wear uh, Real Men Wear Pink, Real Men of Orion. Um, that's, uh, that's what it's all about. The group decided not to set a fundraising goal since all donations are appreciated when the cause is so important. It's a great cause. I'm actually a breast cancer survivor. So I love that um, these guys work so hard to put this event together and go out on the lake and float, listen to live music. It's a great day, it's a great time. Camp Agawam is a beautiful space in Lake Orion that I think more people need to know about. The day concluded with all participants gathering on Tommy's Lake in an effort to form the world's largest pink floating party. Yeah, the first year that we did it was at Greens Park, um, and it worked really well, but it was at the towards the end of September um, because uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is actually in October. Um, but they wanted to get started a little bit earlier this year. This event is a lot of fun. It's one that was really well received by the community. Um, so they wanted to try to move it up this year, and it turned out to be really great. Um, this just offers them a little bit more freedom to do some other things, um, like selling drinks and stuff like that is always something that you want to have on the beach. Um, wasn't able, We weren't able to do that the last time, um, so that's something that we were able to add this year. Um, it's a little bit more tucked back um, instead of right in the middle of downtown. Parking is a little bit easier. There's not as many hoops to jump through. Um, plus, we get to work with the Friends of Camp Agawam who are graciously donating all of the proceeds that um, come today. Um, so that's really, really great too, being able to work with another, um, with another charity in the community. So, Well, it was a beautiful day on Tommy's Lake for this fundraiser today, and if you weren't able to make it out, you can still donate on their website at therealmenoforian.com. For Owen TV News, I'm Lauren Creighton. It's common knowledge that Lake Orion is the place to be when it comes to summer fun on the water. Michigan wave makers realized what a gem the lake is when they organized their first Brave the Wave event five years ago and they returned in 2021. <laughs> on Saturday, August 7th, 74 jet skiers from all over the country came to Greens Park in Lake Orion to compete in Brave the Wave. Cash prizes were handed out in 14 different categories throughout the day, including racing and freestyle events. So today we have the best of the best in freestyle. We have some of the best racing, but literally when it comes to freestyle, the best in the world have shown up in Lake Orion, Michigan today. Uh, Ryan and I were just friends. He was a jet ski racer. I was not. I like event planning. And he said there wasn't anything like this that was happening in the state of Michigan. And I said, we're the Great Lakes state. Why isn't it happening here? And I said, let's do it. So um, we're thankful to the village of Lake Orion and Orion Township. And those guys sat and were willing to work with us to have this happen. So it's the backing of the people in the village, Lake Orion police and all the people that are local that um, helped this to occur. So Ryan and I just had a goal. And we can't believe we're already on year five. And it's grown um, exponentially every year. We still had our event during COVID. We were limited to the amount of people here, but it still happened. We didn't give up. And it's just great. Beautiful day, 82 and sunny in Lake Marine, Michigan. Can't ask for better. Coming all the way from Brainerd, Minnesota, was 13-year-old Nolan Jukish, who also happens to be the 2019 IJSBA Junior Freestyle World Champion. He clearly was a fan favorite at Saturday's event. Yeah, we practice almost every day and just a lot of consistent rides. And What's going through your head when you're out there competing? Do you have a routine plan or you just kind of do what comes to you? I kind of have an idea of what I want to do beforehand. And then uh, I just kind of, as I go, if I crash, I can 
make changes in case, but. Cool. Now, while you're out there, I don't know if you realize it, but you are definitely a crowd favorite out there. What What's it like performing in front of a crowd? Uh, scary before, I'm nervous, and then afterwards, it's pretty cool, but in the middle, it's kind of just a blur. I don't really remember much of it, but. <laughs> Entry fees and sponsorships allow Michigan Wave Runners to offer cash prizes to the top three finishers in each event. Money raised each year also allows the organization to support local nonprofits. This year's event benefited Dutton Farm in Rochester. For Brave the Wave results and more, visit MichiganWaveMakers.com. After canceling the event in 2020, Orion Township hosted a fun event that invited families to experience vehicles of all shapes and sizes. <laughs> On Friday, August 6, families paid absolutely nothing as they gathered at Friendship Park for the 17th year of the Big Rig gig to see a variety of trucks, tractors, and emergency vehicles from all around Oakland County. Throughout the evening, the parking lot cycled through a total of 1,190 cars, carrying about 4,000 people. What this is is just the opportunity for families to come out. Um, and enjoy being outdoors and get the rare opportunity to get up close and personal with the big rigs that the kids only get to dream about seeing. We have everything here, um, cement trucks, um, the police department's here with their vehicles, the road commission is here in force with like eight different vehicles, they've got road graders. The obviously the sheriff's department is here with the helicopter and the bear. Um, a little bit of everything is here, big, small, everything in between. Starting back in 2003, this event has grown, adding new rigs each year. This year, the National Guard joined the experience by contributing multiple rigs, including a Humvee, while Lee Extreme Services brought a crane that was too heavy to be set up on the grass. Believe it or not, I stole this idea from a different community. Um, and I just thought it was amazing and I pitched it to my boss who thought I was crazy and he wouldn't let me do it because he thought it was crazy. So it took me probably a year or two to get him to really see that it was not crazy, that it would be amazing. And the first year that we did it we had such an overwhelming response from the community that we've kept at it every year. This free event was made possible by many generous community sponsors. The next Orion Parks event is the Fall Festival of Family Fun taking place at Camp Agawam on Saturday, September 25th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Families can enjoy hay rides, a petting zoo, pumpkin painting, a bounce house, and more. Visit orionparks.com for more information. Certainly looks like fun. Well, way back on June 12th, the Orient Township Public Library kicked off its summer reading program to encourage students to continue reading long after the school year ends. Recently, the library held a bash to celebrate the program's finale, which also acted as a goodbye party of sorts. On Saturday, August 7th, families were invited to take part in the library's summer reading finale. Dozens of children and parents enjoyed fun activities, games, and crafts on the grounds behind the library. Well, today's our summer reading finale, and it looks a little different still. Uh, we're still dealing with some COVID stuff, but uh, we are all outside in the backyard of the library having a little bit of a game party today. So we've got some music playing, we've got some crafts, we've got uh, a rock wall from Oakland County Parks is here, uh, and we've got all sorts of games out for kids to play. And at noon, we're going to be drawing our raffle prize winners from the summer reading program. Organizers were determined to make the program more hands-on this year as opposed to last year when it was done entirely online. So we've had just a lot of different fun activities for kids to do, for actually kids and teens and adults for summer reading. Um, and so the, for kids, they had a little passport that they got to get stamps and stickers for doing different activities in regards to reading and literacy and checking out things around town. Um, and so if they completed all those activities, they get a, a drawing into the raffle the, of their choice for whatever prize they want. Um, and so we've just been doing a lot of activities like that. Teens had their own little bingo game that they were playing all summer as well, similar, uh, trying to win some prizes. We do like to encourage that really fun, reading for fun, reading for pleasure, and it's not always just reading for school and education. So, and by reading for fun and reading for pleasure, they are increasing their literacy skills. It was a bittersweet day for library staff. It was the last day on the job for director Karen Knox, who will be moving to St. Charles, Missouri to begin a new phase of her career. She will act as head of technology services for a chain of 12 library buildings near St. Louis. 
So, yeah, today is my last day as the director of the Orient Township Public Library. It has been an absolute honor to work here for the last nine and a half years and um, lead this staff through this wonderful um, set of services and changes and new technologies and space renovations and all the good stuff we've been able to do. And so um, I, I know they will continue to do wonderful things even though I am leaving. We here at ONTV would like to wish Karen the best of luck at her new position. She did a fantastic job as director and she will be greatly missed. The library board has appointed Kathleen Kwiatkowski as interim director and has hired a firm to find Karen's replacement. And throughout the summer, Galling Buick GMC has hosted numerous car cruises with proceeds benefiting local organizations. Recently, the dealership held a huge event in downtown Lake Orion. ONTV's Joe Johnson was there. On Saturday, July 31st, over 160 classic cars and hot rods line the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the 7th annual Kids and Cops Charity Cruise. Families had an absolutely perfect day to stroll along Flint and Broadway to see the cars on display and to hear oldies courtesy of Rockin' Ronnie. Each year, the event raises funds for the Lake Orion Police Department's Kids and Cops program at Blant Sims Elementary School and the department's Shop with a Hero program held just before Christmas. The biggest thing is the, is the community. Everybody's been cooped up for the last year, not knowing what to do, not seeing each other, not interacting with other every, everybody. It's nice to see the community come out and support a group that, you know, we do stuff and give back to the community. And I'll tell you, law enforcement, what we do has gotten a little tough in the last year, year and a half. But it's nice to come out and see the support and everything that we have going on. And it's just nice to have the community completely supportive of what we do. On Friday nights, parents can drop off their children. They stay with us. We play uh, basketball with them, um, tug of war, floor hockey. Um, we have dinner with them. Just an opportunity for the children to interact with us and see us in a different uh, light versus just being in uniform. The event was organized by Galling Buick GMC, who holds several charity car cruises throughout the season. There was no pancake breakfast this year, but a 50-50 raffle along with donations netted approximately $4,000 at this year's event. No, no challenges. We just decided that we were going to park the cars the way we did last year. It seemed to be a little bit easier. It's a little bit more protection for the people, um, so we're trying to do it that way. It makes it a little easier if the fire department has to get through then we're we're all set there too so yeah so what types of things are going on here today was there no pancake breakfast today? no pancake breakfast this year it was um, manpower issues with everybody as we all know um, we do have a 50 50 going today we have our guest star guest elmo um, and we also have uh, just the stuff itself 100 trophies were given out this year uh, dash plaques were given out uh, so it's, it's a great day. The weather is perfect for this. Nice breeze, cloud, partly cloudy. I, we couldn't ask for anything better. We're really happy from Galling Buick GMC to be able to do this for the, these guys. Thank you so much um, for all the effort you put in to make this a special day for all of us. And again, like I said, I can't say nothing but thank you at the bottom of our hearts. And the kids thank you too. Galling Buick GMC will be hosting another charity car cruise on Saturday, August 28th at Friendship Park to benefit Miracle League Field. Then the season wraps up with a super cruise back at the dealership on M24 on September 18th. If you'd like to take part in an upcoming car cruise, give Galling Buick GMC a call at 248-693-5900. In downtown Lake Orion, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. Great story there. Owen TV has been serving the Lake Orion community for more than 30 years by offering classes, televising meetings, and covering community events and sports. Now Owen TV is excited to announce the latest tool in their arsenal to benefit our viewers. Owen TV's Amanda Porden explains. On July 31st, Owen TV purchased equipment that provides a new service to the community. Thanks to a grant from the county, ONTV installed a closed captioning system from ENCO, a Michigan-based company. This particular unit is the same quality as those used by other high-end TV stations. I talked to Executive Director Ian Locke to learn more about what this means, not only for the station, but for the community. We're very excited to announce that um, we received a grant from Oakland County through the CARES Act 
that came about uh, just under a year ago. It was last fall, and it was for about forty thousand dollars. I shouldn't say about forty thousand. It was forty thousand dollars, and uh, it was to help you know during the pandemic and help cover costs and a variety of other things. And we we're trying to think of you know what could we do with this money to really impact the community, right? So uh, we've been looking at closed captioning systems for our channels for a number of years, and the cost was just so astronomical that we just couldn't entertain it. We knew that the FCC eventually will be mandating that stations like ours, even though we're small, would have to have closed captioning services on our broadcast. So uh, when it came up to it, we saw some pricing. It came down considerably. And so with and the grant, uh, it, it fell into our budget and we were able to purchase our closed captioning system. It was a grant that was um, given through Oakland County and it was for nonprofit organizations and they notified um, the elected officials, which, you know, I'm the treasurer for Orion Township, so I was notified via email and I started reading through the grant and I realized that on TV was a perfect candidate for this grant along with some of the other nonprofits in Orion Township. So that's what made me reach out to Ian about it. It was a last second call from uh, Donnie Steele, our township treasurer. She called on a Friday at about I don't know, 4.35, and we closed down about 5 p.m. on Fridays, and I was wrapping up my day, and the phone rang, and Donnie goes, hey, guess what? There's a grant through Oakland County. The deadline's coming up pretty soon. Uh, I sent you all the information. Why don't you take a look at it? And I said, okay, great, and I just opened the link, and I realized the due time for getting all of our uh, materials in to apply for this grant was literally 45 minutes away. So uh, it came in at the right time. I happened to be in my office and received the phone call and the email and it took about 30 minutes for me to apply and submit it off to the county. So it was it, it was down to the wire, uh, but uh, her timing couldn't have been uh, more perfect. Made entirely of AI and 98% accurate, the closed captioning system began its test run the week of July 26. Locke hopes it will be fully functioning and available for the public to use by the middle of August. Due to the pandemic and we're watching more virtual meetings and more things online and you know, trying to get more people involved in uh, being able to um, access the meetings and the information as they're happening live. So uh, a lot of this had to do with trying to make these meetings, get these uh, the township, school board, and village meetings all up to ADA compliance. Captioning for the community is excellent for people that have hearing disabilities, um, and I actually know of a couple people in the township that do have hearing disabilities, and for people that um, cannot hear at all or have uh, D diminished hearing that it's great for them and especially for like you know when we do our public uh, broadcasting of our local meetings um, a lot of times you don't hear what people say because it's muffled or you don't understand them and to be able to read it at the bottom of the screen really helps with our minutes and especially for the posterity of what is being said and voted on I think it's a great tool. What you'll see is uh, when you turn on a government meeting or programming on ONTV, just like any other show at home, you can turn on your closed captioning on your television and captions will appear. Uh, we, the, the really cool thing about this uh, product is that our captioning will also work online. So if you watch our meetings and programming uh, on a live stream uh, on our webpage at orientontv.org, the captions will also be embedded there when it's a live uh, meeting or event. Okay, and the other cool thing is that we can actually do captioning after the fact. So let's say we have a football game in the field, we record, we can bring it back, and we can actually caption the Dragon football game and post it on our video on demand service, and it will have captions as well. I can't thank Donnie Steele enough. Um, we've worked together for a number of years since she's been on the board and now treasurer of the township and she was on the, uh, our cable commission, the Orient Cable Commission here, so we worked together for a number of years and have a great, ONTV has a great relationship with the township and uh, other uh, government ent entities here in Lake Orion, and that just shows the relationship, how, how good it is that she immediately thought of us and said, hey, here's a grant, you guys could take advantage of it, and she was right. ONTV is covering 100% of the expenses for this service. If you're interested in learning how the process works or want to report an issue, 
please contact us at 248-393-1060. From the Orient Center for ONTV News, I'm Amanda Porter. And finally, believe it or not, the high school football season is right around the corner. A longtime tradition brings coaches, players, and the media together to get fans excited about the upcoming season. Owen TV sent sports reporter Sammy Taramina to Rochester to cover the event. On Friday, August 6th, Rochester High School once again hosted OA's Football Media Day. After canceling the event in 2020 due to the pandemic, players and coaches representing 20 different teams returned to Rochester to meet with the members of the media and look ahead to the upcoming 2021 season. Falcons head coach Eric Vernon welcomed those in attendance and invited coaches up to the podium to say a few words, including Lake Orion Dragons head coach Don Blackstock. The Dragons finished with a 3-3 three three record in 2020's COVID impact season and a 1-2 record against the OA Red. The Red division includes crosstown rivals the Oxford Wildcats as well as the Clarkson Wolves, along with the Southfield Arson Tech Warriors, the Stony Creek Cougars, and the 2020 state champions, the West Bloomfield Lakers. I had a chance to talk to some of the coaches about their expectations for the upcoming season. Talk about last season and everything heading into this year. Well, last season, of course, was a challenge, uh, the up and down with COVID. So that, that, that was an mo emotional roller coaster ride for the whole program and the coaches and parents. Uh, once we got over that hump, and each week we, we was hoping we play week to week. So it was a week to week thing last year. So we're looking forward to uh, uh, another challenge this year. Me as the head coach, uh, Bell did a tremendous job like, uh, the last t 10 years he's been here. I've been here nine years right by his side. So we're just going to pick on what we left off. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Our expectation is to defend our state championship. Mm -hmm. uh, anything less than that is, is unsatisfactory for our program. How, how's the transition been going for you at Oxford? It's been good. It, it's, it was awesome to have a normal summer this year. Um, you know, just I think it was almost better not being a coach before and you know, coming into a COVID year because you didn't know what to expect. Um, but now having a normal year, you have plenty of time to work with your athletes. And, um, you know, this team is a special team to work with because they don't ask questions. They just get to work um, and they enjoy it. So talk about last season, obviously, had a great year, obviously. So so when you look at, it, of course, replacing a new quarterback, I mean, that's going to be really interesting for you guys. Yeah, I mean, we had a great year last year. Um, you know, our goal this year is just continue to uh, make strides in our armor up culture, uh, keep coming to work every single day. Uh, you know, replacing our quarterback, Ryan Eckhout, was a great quarterback for us last year. Um, we got uh, two really good young men that we're looking at. You know, have had great summers, have done everything we've asked them to do, and we're just looking forward to getting the pads on and, and continue just to improve every day. And the guy who gives us the best chance to win, along with a lot of those things that we do offensively and defensively, is uh, how we're going to be successful. Talk about how the chemistry's been going. You know, I think we're off to a good start. We've still got some things to work on in terms of coming together a team and, and really learning to uh, to value each other and, and play for the guy next to us because I think that is so important uh, in a team sport like football. How is the secondary issues going on here? That is a question mark. Yeah, it's a, it's a question. A lot of new faces back there um, with the graduation of some really good players. Um, but we're excited about the young guys and what they've shown so far in the summer and excited to get going on Monday and be able to do it on a much more consistent basis. Lake Orion kicks off the 2021 football season on Thursday, August 26, as they take on the Eagles of Utica Eisenhower. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. From Rochester, I'm Sammy Termina for ON TV News. Thanks, Sammy, and with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ON TV News. And before we wrap up, we've certainly had a quick summer. I'm so glad oh you gosh, could join yes. us today. I'm so happy to be anchoring my first episode. Nice so job. exciting, mm -hmm. and even more that I'm going back to Central, and this will be my last tailgate season. Okay, well, we'll you know certainly wish you the best of luck in your last Thank season. Thank you. And so, on behalf of the Hard Work News team here at ON TV News, I'm Stacy Calloway, and I'm Lauren Creighton. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.